We're now going to look at routing within our application. We saw this in the demo where we passed through home and index uh, in the URL here. We did something like that. Um, this obviously isn't found at the moment, but that's basically what we're going to be doing here. And it's very, very straightforward. It's not an advanced routing system, but the point of this is just to learn the basics of creating this uh, MVC application. So this isn't advanced routing, but it will do the job. Uh, what we first need to do is define the default controller and the default method. So inside of controllers, we're going to need to create a new file uh, or actually create a new controller altogether. So I'm going to call this home.php. So this is going to be class home, and this is going to extend the base controller, which we've just called controller. So we're not going to do anything too much here for now. Uh, we're going to have to put something in here to actually test the routing. So let's create a index method. And again, this is going to be the def default method that we call. So in here, I'm just going to say home index, just so we know that we're hitting this eventually. We'll close that down. We don't need that. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a protected uh, property called controller. And I'm automatically going to set this to home. So let's create another one here called method, and we'll set this to index. So these are going to be the default controller and default method that we run when we uh, basically bootstrap our application. Now, we also need to take into account parameters as well. So I'm going to say params is an empty array, and these are going to be parameters that we are able to pass through. So eventually we want to get to the point where we can say home, index, and test or something like that. Test will then be the first parameter, test two, and test three will be the second and third. So that's what we're aiming to do here. So inside of the construct, we want to actually parse our URL, but we're going to hand this off to an additional function uh, or another function. So this can be public, it doesn't really matter. Uh, probably better to have this as protected. Um, so this is going to be parse URL. So parsing the URL is going to involve uh, basically uh, exploding and trimming the sanitized URL that we have. And this will give, up, give us the different parts to the URL. So it will give us the controller, it will give us the method, and it will give us any parameters that are left over after that. So the first thing we want to do is check if this URL is set. Now, we're going to be doing very minimal error checking within this application. The reason being that it basically means that then you can see what's going wrong. We're not going to be checking if files exist or, well, very minimally checking if files exist before we start to include them. Um, but this, is just, this just means it's easier to debug. So let's check if... Um, URL get URL exists now you might be thinking well how is this the URL you know you you'd probably imagine uh, a get to look like this something now the reason that we are checking within the get super global is because we're going to be using an HT access file to rewrite our URL and pass it through as a get variable so let's just echo out dollar underscore get URL here. And this is just let us sort of debug uh, whether things are working. Now at the moment, this is uh, not found because we're not rewriting anything. But if we were to return to the index file and say URL equals something, and then go ahead and call this parse URL inside of our construct, that will actually output something. So we can use this to play around with it. So what we want to do now is disallow access to the stuff like the app directory, oh sorry, the app directory here, and things like that. So let's create an HT access file first, and then we'll go ahead and deal with the rewriting. So inside of the root directory, let's create a new file, and we're going to say options minus indexes. And this will prevent access to folders like app. Let's say this is HT access, and user dot, and we now see when we try and access app, it doesn't let us. That's really, really important uh, because we don't want to allow people to browse this. Now, be careful within your public directory. Um, basically, 
if you disallow access to CSS files like we've done here, you're not going to allow your app to render CSS files properly. So if we were to create the HT access inside of app instead, let's try that now. So I'm going to create a new file inside of here and say options minus indexes. And I'm going to save this inside of my app directory as an HT access file. And I'm going to use a dot. And there we go. We can access CSS, but when we try and access app, it's forbidden. Perfect. So now let's create this HT access file that's going to deal with actually parsing the URL and passing it through to the get uh, the get super global as we saw here. So inside of public, let's create a new file. This is going to be our HT access file again. So we're basically creating two in our application, and within here, this is what's basically going to handle everything. So multi views is going to let us call pages like, um, for example, if we had index.php, we could call this as index. Um, and we also want to turn the rewrite engine on. And we also want to change the rewrite base. And this is quite important because uh, if you are rewriting um, this, depending on what directory, and you need to provide the full directory path and this allows you to pinpoint the index.php file that we want to call later on with the rewrite rule so the rewrite base in my case if we just open my browser is this here so I can just go ahead and copy this like that um, but this is going to be different in your case so have a play around with it so let's add a few rewrite conditions the first one is going to be uh, directory checking so we say um, percentage and in here we say request file name like this uh, the next is F so this is file checking in fact we can probably just copy this might be a little bit quicker and the next is actually using the rewrite rule to take the current URL and pass it through to index.php as a query string. So we use rewrite rule and we basically want to match everything and we want to pass that through to index.php. The query string is URL equals and then we use the first parameter which is the URL. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to take the string which is the URL, and it's going to pass it through to our parse URL, or well, not parse, pass it through, but it's going to pick it up here and echo it out. So at the moment, we've not got anything after here, but if we were to say home index, I don't know, uh, for the first parameter, Alex, you can see that now we're picking up this value. Effectively, this has been passed through as a query string to URL. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to, I mean, on its own, this is useless. We can't really do much with this. We need to sanitize the URL, split it up so we can actually see if a controller has been accessed or a um, method has been accessed or parameters have been passed in. So within here, what we want to do is we want to return uh, URL and this is going to equal something. So the first thing that we want to do is actually um, trim this. The reason we want to trim this is if it has a trailing slash, this is going to cause another element to be added to the array when we explode this. So we want to take get URL and our trim will trim white space from the right by default. But if we provide a character that will also trim that. So we're removing the trailing forward slash. Now what we want to do is also sanitize this. So we use the filter var function for this. And then we provide here filter sanitize URL. So the last thing we want to do is actually explode this by a forward slash, which is the reason we remove the trailing. So when we explode this, Let's just wrap this in this function first. And then the first parameter is the character you want to explode by. In this case, it's going to be a forward slash. And this will mean that now when we return this, let's just do a print R up here 
on this parse URL method. And that now gives us home as the first parameter, then index, then Alex, and any other parameters we pass in will be included here. So the logic now, we're not going to do this in this part, but uh, later on, the logic is going to be if this is if this is a valid controller, call that controller. If this is a valid method, um, call that method on that controller or include this controller and then call this method. The rest of them will then be parameters that we can then pass through to our controllers to use in views or do whatever we want to with. So we've now split this up successfully and we've now got our URL. So we can set this to URL like this. So we've now got a broken up URL and we've routed that through to our application. We've got the URL here that we can do something with. What we're going to be doing next is, as we said before, checking whether this controller exists. And if it does, we're going to include it. And if this method exists, we're then going to call that passing through these parameters.